guys, welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new, welcome. I started my cleaning routine off early today, which is unusual for me, but there's a lot I wanna accomplish before heading to Walmart and Sam's for my weekly grocery haul. My goal today is to deep clean the upstairs owner suite bedroom, bathroom, and tidy the walk-in closet. Get our daily load of laundry, which are sheets today, dried, folded, and put away, clean and organize the fridge and pantry for restocking later, and tidy the back patio before it rains. I also had to make some changes to my laundry products and will share with you some cleaning and homemaking tips as well as my weekly grocery haul. So if you enjoy this type of content, continue watching. And if you're new to my channel, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed, you know that hitting that like button as well as watching the video to the end really supports my channel. And as always, leave a comment or just say hello. I would love to hear from you, and I always respond. Lately, my oldest son's been using my yoga mat, but forgets to return it to the gym. His excuse is, I don't use it anyway. True, because I haven't used it in three months, but when I'm ready to use it, I would like for it to be readily available. When I think about it though, I'm just happy somebody's getting use out of it. By the way, as I mentioned in the intro, I changed my laundry products. I've used Gang Flings, which are the individual pods for years, but as of today, I switched to the Gang Powdered Detergent. I switched because for the past month, I've noticed plastic residue on several items, which takes extra time to rinse off, and then you have to wash it again. I mentioned this in past videos, and today was fed up, because this has cost me a lot of time and money. So I returned the bulk purchase of Gang Flings to Sam's and received a full refund. If you haven't already realized one thing about me, if a product no longer works, I'm not afraid to let it go. Also, powdered detergent is not my favorite because it's messy, but it's a better alternative than liquid because powdered detergent contains cleaning chemicals that some liquids don't, and it's guaranteed not to leave plastic residue on our clothes. As you can see, I'm opening the windows because the weather was beautiful for three straight days in Atlanta last week. It's slated to rain later this evening, so I need to ensure all my patio chairs are covered and replaced around the fire pit. Hubby finished burning twigs and branches in the fire pit last night and blew off most of the debris on the patio, so today I'll only need to do a quick tidy and replace or double up any chair covers with holes. One of my friends commented recently that I make a funny face when cleaning and I never noticed this. I am aware that I suck my top teeth and that's because it's a fixed bridge, meaning it's not dentures because they remain in place, but they are false teeth. You see, at the age of 16, I lost all my front teeth falling down a flight of concrete stairs. I was in my high school JROTC program and was preparing to serve as a chaperone at a military ball, and while waiting on the concrete steps for honorees to arrive, I fainted. And I blamed myself because I hadn't eaten all day. So for eight years, I wore dentures, but after meeting my hubby of 32 years, who was hygienist in the military, he helped me get a fixed bridge, which has lasted 24 years. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I make a funny face when cleaning. In last week's video, I mentioned for the month of March that I would be cleaning all the doors within my home, and we're starting here in the second owner suite today. I'm considering windows for the month of April, and would like to purchase this rechargeable window back and squeegee to assist. My tendonitis of the right elbow hasn't completely healed, so wiping down all these windows by hand is not an option. What do you use to clean your windows, and if you own a rechargeable window back and squeegee, do you recommend it? I was asked about these Glade plugins a while ago and I do apologize because I can't remember who asked, but I have about 12 of these throughout my home and I purchased them all over time from Sam's. I rarely purchase or burn candles because I'm afraid I'm gonna burn the house down. So I enjoy using these plugins instead. Once a month, I or one of the boys walk around and we check all the plugins and change them out as needed. I was also asked which is better, 
candles, oil diffusers, or plug-ins. And in my opinion, if you want something that is convenient with a long-lasting scent, plug-ins are the way to go. Today, I'm not deep cleaning the vanity on the left because it's rarely used, so I wiped it down off camera with Clorox wipes instead. But I am deep cleaning the right vanity as well as the rest of this bathroom, and it was dirty. To demonstrate to you what I mean, I'm gonna give you a before of the sink, tub, and shower, and after I've cleaned it, show it to you again so you can see what I mean when I say it was dirty. Again, my house is always tidy, but not always clean. The last time I deep cleaned this bathroom was four weeks ago, and in between that time, my oldest son has maintained it. Because he does use this upstairs owner suite anyway, while hubby and I used the downstairs owner suite. Four weeks, it was also a lot colder, so I didn't use a lot of cleaning products because I wasn't able to open the windows to allow the room to air out. Well, that changes today. So along with my homemade cleaning mixture, I'm also using spray away glass cleaner, swifter sweeper, duster and wet pad, pledge furniture polish, two microfiber cloths, and non-bleach Clorox wipes. I just heard the jingle on my LG front load washer, so that means our load of sheets are ready to go in the dryer. Unlike our towels, I do use dryer sheets when drying our sheets. I only purchased cotton 600 thread count or more white sheets, so I'm not concerned with the dryer sheets weakening the material as it does with towels. I also reuse the dryer sheets as deodorizers in my laundry baskets, as well as in other areas throughout my home. If you use dryer sheets, what are the ways do you reuse them after you've removed them from the dryer? This is one of the hardest working appliances within our home. And because I want it to last as long as possible, I maintain it. I forwarded the make and model to a friend a few weeks ago, and she informed me that they no longer make this model, which was a surprise to me. I shouldn't be surprised though because hubby and I did purchase this washer and dryer used off the Lowe's showroom floor over nine years ago. It was reduced significantly lower than the original price so we couldn't pass it up. In that time, we've only had two issues with it that I've discussed in previous videos which were an easy fix. Today I had to pull out the electric Rubbermaid scrubber to clean around the faucet, the edge of the sink, and drain as well as the stopper. Cleaning professionals suggest you clean your sink weekly. I don't. I have about three full bathrooms and one half bath, and they're each cleaned every two to four weeks. Also, if you don't want to invest in this electric Rubbermaid scrubber, an old toothbrush works just fine. You can also clean most bathroom sinks using a general bathroom cleaning spray, but for a more gentler option, I use Dawn dish detergent and cleaning vinegar mixed with water, which does a better job, in my opinion, of cutting through grime. I mentioned this in another video, but it's worth repeating. If you can remove your sink stopper, you should do it and clean it. I was finally able to remove the stopper from my bathroom sink downstairs in the second owner suite bath, and it was the nastiest thing I've seen in a long time. You see, my 4C hair had clogged the sink, so in order to remove the clog, I had to remove the stopper, then use a drain snake to unclog it. I do not recommend using baking soda and vinegar to unclog your sink. First, it's not strong enough. It also can damage your rubber seals and corrode old pipes. Did you see the mess I made while refilling the soap dispenser? Last year, I did the exact same thing, and when I picked it up to rinse off the excess soap, it slipped out of my hand and shattered in the sink. I learned two valuable lessons that day. Not all glass soap dispensers are the same, and take your time when refilling them. The second lesson didn't stick, because here we go again, but this time, I held on much tighter and was very careful when rinsing and drying it off. I've been upstairs 
hair is cleaning for an hour, so I'm going to take a quick break to check on Max before cleaning the tub. Max is not caged when I'm upstairs and no one else is here. He's pretty good because most of the time he just hangs out on the couch or plays in the foyer with his toys. Also, as promised, here's a before of the tub, and as you can see, it is in need of some loving. After using a swifter duster to remove the hair and debris, I'm going to use the non-bleach Clorox wipes to clean it. The last time this tub was used was over three months ago, and it was deep cleaned after that. Our family members are not tub people, so our jetted tubs are not used very much at all and are really reserved for guests. As promised, here's an after of the tub, but before we clean the shower, I want to tidy the patio. As I mentioned earlier, last night Hubby burned all the twigs and branches that had blown all over our yard in the fire pit and used the blur this morning to clean the remaining debris off the patio. So now I can replace the chairs around the fire pit and also check to ensure there aren't any holes in the chair covers because the forecast calls for rain and our patio is not covered. Although not shown here, we do have end tables. I placed them under the chair covers to protect them from the rain. Also, if you're curious as to what they look like, as well as the chairs, check out my DIY patio makeover and transformation video I published nine months ago. It was my first video to receive a thousand views within eight hours and one of my most popular uploads last year. Max is so funny. He's begging for another treat because he knows when left alone, for a period of time, always say good boy first, if he's been a good boy, and then reward him with a treat. Since I was only outside for 10 minutes, he's not receiving another one until after I clean the shower, because that always takes longer than 10 minutes. Before cleaning the shower though, I wanna clean and organize the fridge and pantry, because as I said before, I plan to purchase groceries later this evening. I did all of it off camera though to save time, but I do a lot of restocking and organizing later in the video. As you can see, I am making a mess. I would normally pull out the funnel to refill this container, but I stuck it in the dishwasher after using it off camera to refill another container. I'm always telling my sons to use the funnel when refilling items, so they don't waste additional time cleaning up their messes later and look at me. I'm just glad the boys are not around to witness this. This shower is gross, so we're going to take some time to deep clean it, starting with the handheld shower wand. I should have given you a close-up of it first because there was a buildup of black hard water stains caused by high levels of dissolved manganese, and it happens because of oxidation. I clean it using my vinegar mixture and Rubbermaid scrubber, and in the past, I've also placed cleaning vinegar in a plastic bag and allowed it to soak over a period of time. shown cleaning all the walls of the shower in past videos so I wanted to do that today. It takes time doing this but it's so worth it. You wouldn't believe the amount of soap scum and residue that are on your shower walls and by using this power drill it removes it seamlessly every time. I also like switching out the brush head to clean the corners of the shower as well as the seam around the shower pan. I'm always afraid that this brush head will scratch the glass when cleaning between the shower pan and glass door, but so far it hasn't happened. I've never used the power drill brush directly on the glass and never will, but I do use the yellow side of the Scotch-Brite sponge to scrub off any soap scum, as you can see here. A month ago, I stopped using spray away glass cleaner on my glass shower doors, and it was a smart decision that has saved me a lot of time and money. love how clear the glass gets as I clean it and it motivates me to keep going because by this time I'm exhausted. 
By the way, quick tip. Shower doors are made of tempered glass, which makes it more durable. I chose the frameless glass doors for both of the boys' showers and semi-frameless for me and hubby's shower. In me and hubby's future bathroom remodel, my plan is to choose frameless glass doors because in my opinion, they're easier to clean and have fewer areas for dirt, grime, and soap scum to accumulate. I'm washing my hands because I hurt the dryer, so that means our load of sheets are ready to be folded and put away. I'm also keeping track of time because I want to get my grocery shopping done before it gets too late. And I'm trying to decide what to cook for dinner. And may grab a few ready-made casseroles and rotisserie chicken from Sam's because I really don't feel like cooking after all this cleaning. One of you asked how I folded my fitted sheet and I didn't do a good job of explaining it so I figured I'll show you instead. I hold the sheet by placing my hands in the corners. I then fold the sheet in half by taking one corner and tucking it into the other. I repeat the process one more time so that all four corners are now folded into each other. I then lay the sheet down and fold the edges from outward and smoothing as I go. After this, I fold in thirds until it becomes a square. I always shake my pillowcases and smooth out as many wrinkles as possible before storing. By doing this, it reduces friction, which causes wrinkles as you sleep. I have also tried sleeping on a silk pillowcase, but as a menopausal woman, silk pillowcases offer a less than desirable temperature regulation, which is a must at my age. Also, when it comes to t-shirts and undershirts, I fold them in thirds because I store them vertically instead of flat in our nightstands or the boys' dresser drawers. I forgot what this method is called, but if you have deep drawers, you should give it a try. You can save a lot of space storing them upright, and it keeps everything much more organized. the lint trap of the dryer, we're going to finish cleaning the shower. I still need to wipe down the exterior of the shower doors and I do this without using any products. I am using the microfiber cloth that we used previously to wipe down the interior of the doors and I always look forward to the final step of cleaning the shower which is rinsing the shower walls and floor. It's so satisfying seeing all the gunk wash down the drain, and I take my time doing this, which motivates me to continue cleaning. I know it does look nasty, but I remind myself that this was in a shower before you cleaned it, and you are keeping your family safe by removing it. By the way, how are you doing? I've been really concerned about Carol and Wanda, and ladies, please let us know how you're doing. Also, did any of you do anything last week you wished to share? I had a very productive week as I was able to get all of our tax documents scanned in, and we only need one more before filing. I was also able to spend quality time with family and friends, and extra time doing things that I enjoy. I chuckled every time I put these gloves on because of what my younger son said a few months ago. Anyway, let's get this toilet clean so we can go grocery shopping in order to restock the fridge and pantry. Today, I'm only purchasing items that we're low or out of. And I found by doing this, I've saved us tons of time and money when grocery shopping. In the next video, I'm also going to share with you how we did with our February budget and our plan for the budget in March. 
If you're new to my channel, I'm the only female within my household, and I tell you this because I have to spend extra time cleaning the nooks and crannies of the toilet, as well as all around it. So yes, in order to give all four toilets in our home a thorough clean, I take my time. Washing my hands and taking out the trash, my plan is to wipe down the vanity to get rid of the splatters of toothpaste on it and then vacuum and mop the floors. I also need to clean the floors in the bedroom, but I may not have time to do that today because it is getting pretty late, but we'll play it by ear. I decided to vacuum the bathroom floors versus using the Swifter Sweeper dry sweeping cloths. The ceramic floors in the bathroom have grooves, so unlike the vacuum, the Swifter Sweeper is unable to lift the dirt between those grooves. I will use the Swifter Sweeper to clean the laminate floors in the bedroom though. By the way, I'm using a fresh microfiber cloth dipped in water to clean the front of the vanity. These are painted cabinets and drawer fronts, so I don't want to use any chemicals on it as I'm afraid I'll damage the paint job because it will peel over time if not maintained. using a damp microfiber cloth worked just fine. Before we vacuum though, I remember that I forgot to clean the door to the toilet room. And as a reminder, our spring cleaning goes from March is cleaning all the doors. And in April, maybe windows if I purchase that window vac and squeegee to assist. I decided that once I'm done vacuuming, I'm gonna go ahead and head to Walmart and Sam's. It's getting late and I do not wanna be caught in Walmart once the kids are out of school. It seems in our area, Walmart is the new hangout spot. And I've seen more kids thrown out of Walmart lately than anything. What is going on? If you know, please fill me in. As you can see, I'm headed out, and when I return, I'll share with you what I purchased. I want to get the cold items and perishables in the fridge first, so we'll start there. From Sam's, I purchased two of the rotisserie chickens for $4.98 each. And my plan is to pair them with the two casseroles I'll also purchase from Sam's, which are the lobster mac and cheese and chicken alfredo. We were low on the boys' French toast sticks for breakfast, and I love the fresh squeezed orange juice that Sam's offers for $9.98. It's pricey, but so worth it. I was low on my favorite brand of coffee, Dunkin' Donuts, as well as paper towels and bottled water. And of course I had to restock the boys' snack drawer with glazed donuts and the oatmeal cream pies, and my favorite smart food white cheddar popcorn, as well as the Cheetos Flamin' Hot Popcorn, all from Walmart. We were low on ketchup, perlmilling syrup, which was once AJ syrup, hubby's D3 and multivitamins, as well as my colon health tablets. And if you watched my last video, I used all the cans of Rotel in that recipe, so I needed to replenish the stock of it, as well as my son's favorite soda, Sprite. Also from Walmart, hubby and I needed more body wash, and our favorite is the coconut scented Aveeno body wash. 
I also found these decor eggs for $3.48, and I'm gonna see what they look like in the lidded dish located in our bathroom. We also needed more light bulbs, shop stain removal, and white distilled vinegar. Before putting these groceries away, I wanna warm up the oven for the casserole dishes. They both cook at the same temp of 375 degrees for the same amount of time, which is 45 to 55 minutes, which makes it very convenient and easy to cook them both together. If you're new to my channel, I like baggy most, if not all, of my freezer items. This protects the bottom of the freezer from crumbs, and if the freezer ever goes out, the contents will not leak all over the place. Now that our perishables are stored away, let's restock our pantry with the boys and my favorite snack items. Although not shown here, one of my favorite snack cakes are the Intamin's Mini Crumb Cakes from Walmart. They are quite messy, but are so good. I usually eat one per week with a cup of coffee, but as you can see, they do not last long in this snack drawer. Again, my belief is you can eat whatever you want, but in moderation, so don't judge me. oven has heated to 375 degrees so we're going to go ahead and remove the plastic covers from the casseroles cover with aluminum foil and place in the oven for 45 minutes after that time is up i'm going to go ahead and remove the aluminum foil add a little bit of cracked pepper and then replace back in the oven uncovered for an additional 10 minutes by the way the cooking directions on the package doesn't include that last step but in my opinion, the casseroles taste better by adding a little bit of cracked pepper. Unfortunately, the oven wasn't quite as ready as I thought, so until then, we'll restock the pantry and once the oven beats, We'll set the timer for 45 minutes and place the casseroles in the oven. Now that our casseroles are in the oven, we can finish restocking the pantry. Also need to place the white distilled vinegar, shout stain remover, and light bulbs in the laundry room. I gradually started changing out my warm white light bulbs to the daylight bulbs, and it has made a world of difference. At first, the change is drastic, but over time, you get used to it. For the fun part, decorating. I'm adding these colorful eggs to this lidded dish from Anthropology. I later changed it by removing the colorful ones and only leaving the beige and brown ones and absolutely love it. I also tried using the viral eggs from Hobby Lobby, but they were too large for the dish. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, my coffee drawer was low. So I'm refilling it with a 72 pack of Dunkin' Donut coffee pods from Sam's. This drawer contains pod foam inserts that I ordered off Amazon and each foam insert can hold up to 45 pods. I have considered purchasing a small fridge for the garage so I can store extra water and sodas there, but I changed my mind after cleaning the garage last summer and noticed there really wasn't any space for it. Hubby and I had also planned to build an additional two-car garage, but was quoted a $75,000 price, which is not in the budget at this time. It's the next day and I need to sweep the bedroom floors as well as mop it, along with the bathroom floors. I was too tired to do it last night after putting away the groceries. So right after dinner, I called it a night with a plan to do it today. Unlike the bathroom where I used the vacuum, I'm choosing to use the Swifter Sweeper Dry Sweeping Cloths since I started using these cloths two weeks ago, I found that I'm more thorough when cleaning the floors. Maybe because it's more satisfying seeing the dirty cloth at the end, it's things like this that gets and keeps me motivated to clean. Yesterday, I forgot to wipe down the closet door, so along with cleaning the floors, I need to check that off my list. I've also noticed since using these sweeping cloths that when it's time to dispose of it, debris that's not trapped in the cloth remains on the floor, so you would need to use a vacuum or broom to get it up. That's one of the reasons why I still use my robot. Have you counted how many times I washed my hands in today's video? And I didn't record every time I did it. I chose to include them in today's video to show that I am being careful when cleaning as to not contaminate surfaces as I switch between them, because it can happen. Also, according to the CDC, which is based right here in Atlanta, hand hygiene is the single most important practice in preventing diseases. I am aware that you're supposed to wash your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds, but after re-watching today's video, I realized that I'm actually washing my hands between 10 to 12 seconds, something I definitely need to improve on. Along with using the dry sweeping cloths, I also like using these wet pads. Again, I find it satisfying seeing the wet areas from the dry areas and the clean smell these wet pads leave behind gets me every time. It seems like this bedroom gets larger and larger as I mop it. Or am I just tired? Once we're done with this area and the section by the door, we'll dispose of the pad and again, I'll wash my hands. And no, I didn't record it. It 
If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.